What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash stories about Kevin. Alright, this story's called Kevin Sr. and Kevin Jr. of Banks and Gay Furry Video of the Adult Variety. Recently, my husband reminded me of this post here, and this unhinged idiot and his equally moronic son, whom I dated in high school. Let us go back, my chillins, to the faraway land of the Midwestern United States in the 1980s. The fridge played on the field any given Sunday, Reagan destroyed the middle class class and speak of the proverbial devil, this story involves one of the biggest devotees of the Gipper, or is it Jipper? I don't know. Dude from the 1940s football guy. Kevin Sr. Kevin Sr. managed one of the biggest banks in their small town with his brother. He trusted his brother, an unmarried bachelor who was violently addicted to cocaine and buying boats, that he'd leave all over our county to properly manage as the president of the bank their father and grandfather had founded shortly after. World War II. It goes without saying that within a few years, Senior's brother drove the bank to a failure due to giving himself multiple shares of profits and is now currently in prison for whatever liability insider training actually is. The fact that he had 10 goddamn speedboats that he kept leaving on random lakes in Michigan was icing on the felony cake. So poor stupid Senior spent most of his adult life cleaning up after this terrible decision on his part and managing other banks, but like Russian history, it got worse for him. Whether it was fate or because he was a stupid butthole, one may never know. His biggest thing that he tried to do was buy and manage the same two bank branches. So they were either in a 100% growth or a 100% deficit, depending on the fiscal year and or the will of the Kevin gods of finance. Next, Senior married an older lady, who will be known as America online from here on out. She was five years older than him when they met, at ages 22 and 27. She immediately demanded that they get married in the one true Catholic church as soon as possible, and a few months, not quite nine months, mind you, later, out pops Kevin Jr. Older lady proceeds to pump out a new child every two years afterwards until they have a brood of five kids between them, because older lady wanted her children to be surrounded by friends. Uh, no, that is not how this works, older lady, you fat dumb bimbo. Because... <laughs> Because of this horde of quasi-bastard children, older lady is a busy stay-at-home mom, and senior is busy cleaning up his brother's vomit and dead hookers at the two branches of the bank, as well as bringing home the bacon to feed all these kids. But he never quite warmed up to Junior, who did not look anything like him, his wife, or any of their extended family members, having a huge nose, different colored hair, and being quite slender, unlike the vaguely poor scene looking family that Kevin Sr. came from. Sr., of course, chalked it up to a faith in God that he now has a son that looked like the milkman and was born a nine-pound, full-term baby six months after his marriage. Oh no. This is, of course, such as the Kevin do. Not wanting to cause a cuckold scandal, Sr. put up with Junior, who, unlike everyone else in the family, was also extremely artistic and verbal, reading books at three and math mastering calligraphy and cursive before he started grade school. Whoa! These were traits that royally pissed off Senior, like your ass would not believe, who often threw out his kids' art supplies in order to toughen them up, because that is a classic Kevin parenting move. Junior dealt with Senior's continued emotional abuse throughout his childhood, which ranged on the season. Senior refused to teach Junior how to ride a bike, and Junior remembered sad memories of his dad taking all the other kids on bike rides throughout the neighborhood, whilst he sat at home watching them have fun with their dad. Junior was given the hardest physical chores as well to toughen him up. This included pruning older ladies' rose bushes, mowing the lawn, and moving the furniture, which Kevin Sr. kept buying and forgetting about, so it often ended up in one of the bank's front rooms, confusing the hell out of the customers who just wanted to deposit a check rather than walk around a collection of Ethan Allen couches. Junior kept thinking that 
that pruning the rose bushes meant trimming all the flowers and letting the vines grow. They never realized it, and when I first came over to their house, Junior proudly showed me his work on the thorn bushes. Senior later moved them over after a fight with older lady. Around this time, Junior and I met as junior camp counselors at the local YMCA. Me because I wanted to get the frick out of the house for the summer, and Junior because his dad thought him hanging around a bunch of dudes in swimming trunks was going to make his son interested in girls. Sure enough, Junior and I started dating. Being a fat little 15 year old who is really into Lord of the Rings and horses, I thought that our dates consisting of Junior holding my hand as we watched movies and listened to Andrew Lloyd Webber soundtracks was the height of romance. My god, I think he briefly turned me into a Kevin. Around this time, Junior was also downloading a lot of video of the adult variety on the family computer, because that is what idiot teen boys do. I mean, we're on Reddit, I get it. But it was okay, he explained to me, as he mostly got family-friendly video of the adult variety. What the fuck is that crap, you ask? According to Junior, family-friendly video of the adult variety consisted of a lot of funny cartoon dickings, especially of the rooster from Rock-a-Doodle-Doo getting butt-banged by the biker mice from Mars. Yep, gay furry video of the adult variety is good for the whole family, you see. God, my poor boy Throttle deserved better. Junior even took to drawing this crap and sending it to me via his mom's email address and promptly lost his cool with me when I told him I thought him spending hours drawing cartoon roosters getting banged by beefcake mice was really freaking weird and maybe he should focus on his AP art portfolio instead. Junior screamed at me that he was bisexual and a true girlfriend would be a-okay with it. Otherwise, I was prejudiced and a monster who didn't deserve him and his pirated Phantom of the Opera CDs. So I shut up and took it, as young girls with negging bisexual furry boyfriends are wont to do. Older lady discovered Junior's big gay furry album on her email shortly thereafter and promptly grounded him. A senior took to screaming at Junior constantly after this incident and at one point shoved him down the stairs when he discovered that his brother cashed most of their stock options so he could buy another boat and abandoned it in Ypsilanti. Ypsilanti? I don't know. Junior had, by this point, hooked up with a series of other furries, including a 23-year-old unicorn or a horse or whatever who invited him to come spend the night a few times a week at his place and they'd play dress up. I told Junior I wanted to be the only person in the relationship. Junior explained to me that bisexual people were allowed as many partners as they wanted, unlike straight people. And if I wanted him, I needed to be expected that I was not always going to be first in line. I promptly stopped taking his whiny ass phone calls and went out with my friends instead of wasting any more time on Junior and his furry video of the adult variety and cheating self. Shortly after this, Junior ran off supposedly to his pansexual unicorn boyfriend's house. I should mention that Junior didn't even have his permit, as he crashed Senior's car when he briefly started learning how to drive, and Senior promptly forbade him from ever learning how to drive under his watch. However, Junior only made it close to two miles before he made it to a payphone. He begged me to come pick him up as he didn't have a car, and Senior had found out that he was a part-time love slave to an adult man who liked dressing up as a My Little Pony, and oh why, oh why did not anyone understand him? Doing the emotional labor that is expected of a teen girl who's been parentified since she was 10, I explained to Junior that I only had my driver's permit, so I called my dad and asked him to help my boyfriend. My dad, in an act of meanness I didn't know was possible, called up Senior and told him exactly where his son was. Senior drove up to Junior in their neighbor's car. Junior gleefully jumped in, only to find out that it was Senior who came to pick him up. Senior proceeded to beat the ever-living crap out of Junior in the car. Yikes. At this point, I gave up once and for all on the Kevins, broke up with Junior, and swore never to go near them or their family's bank ever again. Senior's brother ended up doing time in prison for hillbilly insider trading, and the bank declared, well, bankruptcy. Older lady was forced to get a real job, and Junior 
Junior was the only one of the five kids to stay by his parents' side and help out by getting multiple associate's degrees. Those are their own stories, and I'll continue on with them soon. And OP's leaving a note to the part about Senior beating the ever-living crap out of Junior in the car, and they say, Writing this out is painful, folks. I remember running over to my dad's house and asking when we were going to grab Junior, and my dad proudly telling me he called Senior instead. When I cried and asked him why he would call an abusive parent and tell them where their mistreated child is, he patronizingly told me that I wouldn't understand. I'm a little girl and not a parent. He did the right thing. I told him I wish I had different parents and then refused to see my dad for weeks. It's one of many reasons my dad is not allowed to be alone with my daughter now. Well, OP, thank you for sharing and you know what? I guarantee you that you were a very valuable part of Kevin Jr.'s life because, you know, it seemed like he was dealing with a lot of mean people and, you know, it, it's nice that you were in his corner at least, despite all the annoying crap. This story's called, My Nephew is the Biggest Kevin I Have Ever Met. This is a story of my nephew's disastrous adventures, how my family demanded I cure him of stupidity, and how he was fired from each of his jobs. My family is kinda strangely staggered by age. My older brother is 37, and I'm 19. He's my only sibling, so I am, by extension, my nephew's only uncle. My nephew is also 19. Ha! <laughs> uh, that's funny. My parents expect me to understand Kevin and to figure out what's wrong with him. Infuriatingly, they expect me to be an uncle slash mentor figure to Kevin and relate to him as a teenager. For context, let's go back to his younger years. The first true act of Kevinness that my idiot nephew pulled was his cyber attack on my dad's business site online. Kevin was only 14 when he did this. Uh, by cyber attack, I mean he went onto my dad's website, my dad sells sports memorabilia, and posted a uh, video of the adult, or I guess just adult content into the comment section of the site. No, not just a little adult content. 7,000 image comments worth using a bot he found online. When asked why, he told my dad, All grandpas are horny. My friends at school said they are. Next was Kevin's genius 16th birthday birthday stunt. At his party, he had a pool. He also had a garden gnome. He decided the best move for maximum coolness with his peers was to somersault off of a makeshift diving board made out of glued together 2x4s. Not only jump off the diving board, but do an acrobatic with a gnome at the same time. Kevin leapt off the diving board. Keep in mind, there were seven other people in the pool and three more out of it, but nearby. As Kevin kicked off the board in reverse, plunging head and back first, he he slammed his feet into the gnome and kicked it straight up. As Kevin crashed into the water and the spinning gnome experienced gravity, it slammed into Kevin's leg, which, which pulverized and put him on crutches for three months. He was lucky he didn't kill one of his friends with a gnome to the head. On his first day of real work this January, Kevin got an aid on the ACT and skipped college. Whoa! Kevin was working at a gas station. He decided, since it was cold that day, that when he showed up, his his best work attire would be a heavy coat and balaclava. That's right, he wore bank robber's clothes because it was cold. They almost called the police until the inevitable, it me, Kevin, when he pulled the mask off. A week later, he was fired for cutting out a photo of a celebrity out of a magazine on sale at the store and masturbating with it in the bathroom of the store for four hours. Kevin is a big video gamer and actually has some success on Twitch playing Minecraft. He has 500 subs. Why anyone would want to watch him do anything is beyond me. He probably digs straight down in mines at night. <laughs> anyway, here's a few of his misadventures in gaming. He was caught trying to play real life Minecraft, as he put it, for YouTube. That means going in the backyard with a pickaxe and digging holes in the lot. He bought a jar of borscht, Russian beet soup, at a grocery store and drank it on stream while 
while playing Counter-Strike. I don't play it, but he says it has lots of Russians and he wanted to show Super Slav energy. Next was his attempt at taking the SAT instead of ACT. Kevin refused to study for his ACT retake and scored 8, an improvement from 6 on his first try. My school offered SAT for students who failed at ACT. Kevin got a 660, which he called hard work. He was also caught in the shower giving himself a vinegar enema as punishment for failing after the ACT retake when he came home from taking it. He once went to a bank with a stack of CDs because he wanted a CD or a certificate of deposit. He also jumped on my brother's, his father's knees while he was sleeping and ran out of the room. My brother woke up groaning in pain and Kevin just admitted it out of the blue. <laughs> One time, <laughs> Kevin tried to ski in the house. That's right, skiing indoors. He put snow from outside on the stairs, came barreling down and slammed face first into the Christmas tree, which collapsed like his hopes of making the nice list that Christmas. The last story I can think of to post was the time he decided to do a boogeyman impersonation last weekend. I don't care that I'm a grown man. I freaked out on him over this one. Kevin jumped out of my closet at 2 a.m. during Thanksgiving this year. That's not a big deal. The big deal is that I thought I was alone in my room for three hours in pitch black before Kevin, wearing red light bulbs clipped to his glasses, leaped out of my closet shrieking like a banshee and yelling in a shrill voice, I'm gonna eat you! A couple of weeks ago, I bought a gun, unrelated to Kevin, and if I had been on the other side of the bed where I keep my gun, Kevin might have been a dead man. He scared me so good. Honestly, that's a win on his part. I'm not even gonna cap. Kevin, good job there. Fast forward to the last three months. My family wants me to de-Kevinize him. I don't know where to start. This guy nearly tricked me into shooting him. And yet, they want me to, one, act as a mentor, as his uncle, and two, relate to him because I'm his age. This is insane. Hope you got a kick out of hearing about my idiot nephew. Edit! Wow, this blew up. I'll upload some more of my stories later. I think I've told all the best one, but there's more. <laughs> that seems pretty funny. And it's always interesting when uh, uncles and aunts are like the same age as their nephews and nieces. It's always funny. I've got a situation like that here. Um, I've got a two-year-old cousin and uh, a few-month-old, I guess six-month-old or more, nephew. Uh, it's pretty interesting. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.